I want to talk a little bit more about Golden Boy versus Matchroom. Oscar De La Hoya versus Eddie Hearn. Both on the zone. Two promoters who will be competing with each other now on that platform. Who's going to win? Who's in the stronger position? Right now, it's kind of 50-50. Because Golden Boy have got Canelo, who is the biggest star in world boxing. But they don't have anywhere near as many fighters as Eddie Hearn's got with Matchroom. Matchroom have got way more fighters. They put on way more big shows. And they've got more dates than Golden Boy have got at the moment on the zone. And not only have they got dates on the zone, but obviously Eddie Hearn's got dates in the UK on Sky. And remember, Eddie Hearn gets money from every show he puts on. Of course, there are going to be some shows that run at a loss, but generally Eddie Hearn runs shows at a profit. So every show he puts on, that's more money to spend on other shows. People need to remember that. De La Hoya, his whole business revolves around Canelo and the money he can make from Canelo shows. So, as I've showed you in another video today, De La Hoya has no money for anybody else. That's why he only puts on small shows other than the Canelo shows, basically. Maybe the odd decent-sized show for Lemieux here and there, but his whole business runs around Canelo and all the other shows he puts on are tiny little shows in you know, theatres and stuff like that. That's what he does. Whereas Eddie Hearn has got loads of fighters with big fan bases from the Amir Khans and the Kell Brooks to the Anthony Joshua's to the Dylan Whites to Alexander Usek, etc., etc., etc. Danny Jacobs. And I know Danny Jacobs' fan base is not crazy big, but, you know, as American fighters go, it's decent. So, Eddie Hearn is in a better position in terms of his stable. The stable he's got is a lot deeper. But Canelo is such a massive figure in boxing that it does kind of make up for the lack of depth in the Golden Boy stable. So that's why I say it's 50-50. It's one absolute grade-A superstar in the United States in Canelo against a bunch of B-level, and I'm not talking about how good they are as fighters, I'm talking about their market value. B and C-level fighters in the United States in Eddie Hearn's stable. He's got loads of B and C-level guys in terms of their market value in America, but no A-level guys, whereas Golden Boy have got one A-plus level superstar, and apart from that, they've got nobody else, really, of any who has any significant market value other than maybe David Lemieux in Canada a little bit. That's it at the moment. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. Um, Golden Boy have got 12 dates a year. Two of them are going to be Canelo dates and 10 other dates. How big are those 10 other dates going to be? What's their budget going to be for the 10 other dates? Is Golden Boy really going to try and compete with Eddie Hearn? Are they going to try and get as big as they once were? Are they going to try and sign the Mikey Garcia, Mikey Garcia's of this world? You know, Mikey Garcia is an interesting uh, example because he ain't got that many options, has he, Mikey Garcia, at this point? He ain't going to go to ESPN because he had a bad experience with Bob Arum. He was out of the ring for two years because of that bad experience with Top Rank. So he ain't going to go back to, to top rank in ESPN. And he's obviously unhappy with his current situation with, you know, PBC, Heyman, Showtime. Because if he wasn't unhappy, he wouldn't be shopping around for a better deal. So Mikey Garcia has basically got two options. Eddie Hearn or Golden Boy. If he wants to get away from his current situation, which he apparently does, it's either Eddie Hearn or Golden Boy on the zone. Which one will he go with? I'm sure both of them are going to be competing for his signature. But who's got deeper pockets? Golden Boy or Hearn? Now, one thing somebody posted, and this is yet to be confirmed. One thing somebody posted in my Facebook boxing group is that Eddie Hearn is set to announce more dates, more international dates 
you know, that he'll be promoting on, on the zone. Dates apparently in Germany and several other countries where Matchroom will be putting on shows. Hearn is becoming a very, very powerful man in the world of boxing, the way he's going global. You could even say that Eddie Hearn is the most powerful promoter in the world at this point. How global he is. The only people that can really compete in terms of global promotion might be the people behind the World Boxing Super Series. But other than that, Hearn is right up there, you know. And if this is true, that he's going to be putting on shows in Germany and all kind of other places, wow, the revenue that he's going to get from all that is going to increase the size of his pot when it comes to approaching fighters like Mikey Garcia or whoever else to sign with him in the US. Can Golden Boy compete with that, with the international money that Matchroom's getting? I don't know. It's going to be an interesting situation. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's win-win for fans, right? Uh, and the fact that Eddie Hearn and Golden Boy are both on the same platform means that fights between Eddie Hearn fighters and Golden Boy fighters should be fairly easy to make if there's a will on behalf of each promoter to make the fight. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, well, uh, having two promoters on the same platform is going to be problematic. It's better to have one promoter on one platform. It's better for the fighters. Well, I don't know. Sometimes it might be better for the fighters that way, but other ways it might be better for the fighters if there are multiple promoters on the same platform. Because if there are multiple promoters, they offer different deals. Better deals because they're competing with the other promoter. And, you know, sometimes it's, uh, I mean, for example, Eddie Hearn has done multiple short deals with a lot of the fighters that he's currently got signed to him on his own. So like Artur Baturbiev is on a co-promotional deal with Eddie Hearn for only, I think, three fights, three or four fights. Same with Jarrell Miller. I think it's only two fights with Jarrell Miller, two or three fights. All these short little deals. Historically, Golden Boy have got fighters signed to long-term deals, okay? Matchroom do too. But Matchroom have got a hell of a lot of fighters, including in the UK, who are on these very, very short deals, sometimes fight-by-fight fight deals, like Dylan White, Tony Bellew, and I think Derek Chisora is also on a short deal. And fighters often like the freedom of being on these little short contracts where you only have to fight three fights, you know? Even the, the contracts that Eddie Hearn was offering Adrian Broner, for example, is like a three-fight deal. Often fighters like this because they're not going to get tied down, and if things go wrong, like in the example of Javonta Davis with uh, Floyd Mayweather or even Mikey Garcia when he was with Top Rank or uh, Andre Ward when he was with the Goosens. When the relationship sours between the fighter and the promoter, it's bad for the fighter if they're locked into a long-term contract. So a lot of fighters are liking this idea of taking these little short two fight deals, three fight deals, because it gives them a bit more room to maneuver. And so that might be one of the attractive things for people who want to sign up to Eddie Hearn on the zone rather than De La Hoya. Eddie Hearn might be offering them short-term contracts, which give them more flexibility. Whereas Golden Boy tend to keep people on longer contracts. Now, one of the reasons that Golden Boy tend to keep people on longer contracts is because of the fact that Al Heyman stole most of Golden Boy's fighters, if you remember that. And after he stole most of their fighters, Golden Boy were like, you know what? Nah, we can't allow this anymore. We need to keep fighters in long-term contracts. <laughs> we can't have them just leaving the way that they left. So we got to have them on long-term contracts. Um, but Eddie Hearn is still doing the short-term contract thing for most of his fighters on the zone at the moment. So I guess these are the, the things that, the factors that the fighters have to contemplate if they want to fight on the zone. Do I want to go long-term with De La Hoya? Because De La Hoya 
He's got more experience in the American market. He's got Canelo. And if I fight on a Canelo undercard, I'm getting massive exposure. Well, do, I, do I want to go with Hearn, who his fighters are not as well known in the US. He's got some good fighters, but they're not as well known. But the contract's shorter. He's got more big time shows, even though the fighters are not so well known. They're big production shows. They're shows in big arenas where there's going to be, you know, 15, 20,000 people. And my fights will also get screened in the UK. That may even happen with the Golden Boy shows, to be fair. I'm not sure. I I'm assuming that all of the boxing content, whether it's Golden Boy or Matchroom, all of the content will be shown in the UK on Skype. But I'm not 100% sure about that. I could be wrong. Maybe Golden Boy have got a different deal with the zone, whereby people overseas still have to pay for their content. You know, they're not just going to get it on a regular Sky Sports show. They'll have to pay pay-per-view in the UK or something like that. That could be going on. I don't know how Golden Boy have worked it out with the zone. Uh, but yeah, these are the things that fighters are going to have to contemplate when it comes to... And I'm, I'm just assuming that Golden Boy are not going to offer these short contracts like Matchroom are offering. I'm assuming. I could be very, you know, could very well be wrong. But I'm just going off what Golden Boy have done lately over the past couple years after what happened to them with Al Heyman taking all their fighters. <laughs> They've wanted fighters to sign long-term contracts now. Obviously, again, Matchroom do have long-term contracts. Like with Joshua, he's on a long-term contract. Has been from day one. All right, he's obviously renewed the contract, but it's always been a long-term deal. Whereas the other fighters, the Tony Bellews and the Amir Khans, Dylan White, these guys are on short-term contracts. Alexander Usek, short-term contract. You know, and again, fighters like the freedom. A lot of fighters like the freedom of the short-term contract, but with the short-term contract, sometimes the money isn't as good as a long-term contract. It's still good money, but Maybe not crazy good money, you know, because for a promoter to pay you crazy money, they want guarantees. They don't just want you to come to them, fight for them once and make all kind of crazy money and then go off to their rival and sign with them. Because then their rival gets the benefit of all the hard work that this promoter has put in to promote this fighter up to a pay-per-view level. Then that fighter is going to go over to the competition and, fight for them instead. <laughs> you know, promoters don't like that kind of thing. So when they're dealing with a fighter who's on the level of a Joshua or a Canelo, they don't like doing short-term contracts with them, generally speaking. You know, sometimes it happens, like with Mayweather towards the end of his career, pretty much a free agent going where he wants. You know, he would work with promoters, but he wouldn't sign long-term contracts. Same thing with Miguel Cotto. He was doing like one-fight deals with certain promoters and stuff like that. Uh, but usually... It don't go that way. Anyway, let me know what you feel in the comment section below about the situation and everything I've discussed in this video. Interesting, but at the end of the day, it's win-win for the fans, isn't it? The competition between De La Hoya and Eddie Hearn, who's going to win? Who knows? The fans win. <laughs> let me know how you feel, people. What's happening? I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.